with us and go ahead and join us later or watch the video later. So welcome again to DC Refers Reconnect. We are so pleased today to have with us Eric Christian, who is the presiding judge of the deputy of the probate division of DC Superior Court. I wanna start out by telling you a little bit about DC Refers. Um, I was just explaining that it is a online directory of vetted and screened lawyers who provide civil legal services in a wide variety of different practice areas to people of modest means who otherwise may have nowhere else to turn for help because they earn too much to qualify for free legal services and too little to pay market rates for attorneys. Um, DC Refers recently launched a low bono mediation side to the service, which is the first of its kind in the country. It means if you have clients who might benefit from mediation, but don't have a way to afford mediation, you can go to DC Refers and connect with our panel of mediators who are experienced, vetted, trained, and available to provide affordable mediation services to people who might find that a, a better alternative to litigation. I'll put some information about the mediation services in the chat now. And, and I hope you will look at that and take it and consider it. So we're going to start our program today with just a short um, kind of networking opportunity. I am going to put everyone into a breakout room. You will have two minutes. And during that time, you'll be paired with one or two other people. And I want you to introduce yourself. And in the first round, we'll say where you were born. And it's just a really rapid fire getting to know someone very quickly. The second round will say talk one thing about your practice area or what you do professionally. And then the third round, we'll ask you to introduce yourself and give one success that you've hit recently, something good that has happened to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you in a breakout room. You'll have two minutes to talk to the person that is with you. And, um, and then you can, and then it will automatically come back again. So when you see the button to go ahead and go to a breakout room, you can go ahead and do that. We'll see you back in about two minutes. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you maybe met someone you didn't know before or had a chance to connect to someone you know well. We're gonna do it one more time and this time introduce yourself and share with the other person one thing about your, your, um, one thing about your practice or professional work. And go ahead, you'll have two minutes once again.
Welcome back, everybody. We're going to do this one last time. And this time you can introduce yourself and share one success that you have had recently. And everybody can go. Welcome back again. We are delighted to have with us today the Honorable Eric P. Christian, who is the presiding judge of the probate division of DC Superior Court. You may have seen that recently the DC Access to Justice Commission and the Council for Court Excellence put together a report about the probate division. You also may have seen that the court is going through an reimagining plan for the probate division and many other divisions in DC Superior Court. So we wanted to invite Judge Christian to come and talk about what is happening at the probate division. Um, Judge Christian was appointed to the bench in 2001. He's a native Washingtonian and a graduate of Harvard, or Howard University and George, Georgetown University Law Center. He has had a long and distinguished career in public service, working at the Department of Justice as the deputy mayor for public safety and justice and as legal counsel to the manager before serving on Superior Court. He's been active on numerous court committees and has served as a trial judge in every division of Superior Court. We are very pleased that he is taking the time to be with us today. And with that, I will hand the floor over to Judge Christian. Uh, thank you, Nancy, for that kind introduction. And uh, thank you for inviting me um, uh, to this program, to this conference. Uh, I want to um, welcome everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces. Some are uh, the practitioners who appear before us in the probate division of the Superior Court. And there are other familiar faces who I know on a personal basis. And some I believe I've attended uh, law school and maybe undergrad with. So it's good to see you all. Um, I, I wanted to uh, just talk briefly about what's happening in the a probate division of uh, DC Superior Court, give you some updates and uh, then move into uh, what's happening with our reimagining plan. Um, and I am looking at a couple of the chats that are popping up. So um, if you have questions, feel free to ask at any time. Uh, the probate division uh, and Superior Court uh, is operated and uh, staffed by four associate judges and one magistrate judge. And we handle matters uh, regarding um, uh, decedents of states, deceased individuals, as well as intervention matters. Individuals who have become incapacitated uh, for a variety of reasons that need guardians or conservators appointed to manage their health or financial and or financial affairs. Um, 
some of our updates uh, that have occurred uh, in, in the probate division consist of uh, uh, a change in the probate rules. It's basically an update. We uh, undertook a comprehensive undertaking uh, to update our probate rules. Um, there have been a lot of uh, substantive and stylistic changes. And it was done in order to allow the practitioner or a, a pro se practitioner uh, a way to easy, easily follow the rules to uh, file petitions before the court, before the division, and get them resolved. So it's more of an, an alignment um, uh, of these rules, and they are aligned in a manner in which they're done in a particular order from the beginning to the end, in the sense of one opening up a petition uh, for an estate or petitioning for the intervention, intervention of a guardian uh, or conservator. And those rules will be uh, coming out uh, soon. They have been approved by a board of judges and we're in the process of uh, redrafting the forms that can be readily used by the practitioner in getting the, the matters through the uh, probate clerk's office, the division itself. Um, we also have our self-help center that's uh, back up and running. Um, so uh, pro se practitioners can easily call there and it's my understanding that practitioners make use of that as well. Um, and that's sometimes uh, uh, personnel by uh, students from various law schools and practitioners. So we encourage you to make use of the uh, self-help center along with the um, administrative uh, branch of the uh, uh, probate division uh, through uh, the use of that self-help center. Another thing that's uh, uh, coming on board is uh, the court is changing its case management plan. We've been operating or using court view. Uh, we're gonna be moving uh, to what we call Odyssey. It's this new case management system. Uh, it's gonna be easier to use. And our go live date will be this year, August 1st, uh, 2022. And uh, the court, uh, this is a court wide change and the court will be providing training for uh, individuals and practitioners. Uh, so stay attuned for those uh, announcements and developments when the um, uh, training will begin. Um, the Chief Judge, uh, Anita Josie Herring, has indicated based upon the, the sheer volume of work that we have in the probate division that we may be getting another judge to assist us, another associate judge to assist us. Uh, we have, as I indicated, one magistrate judge uh, and Based upon the demographics and the aging population in the district, those individuals who have become incapacitated, the numbers have just exponentially gone up. The petitions have exponentially gone up. So we're going to uh, seek additional assistance in getting uh, the bulk of these cases resolved in a timely fashion. Uh, with that, we have um, uh, we're, we'll also be reconstituting the fiduciary panel. Some of you present are on that a panel and we're, we invite others to join the uh, panel. Uh, presently, we have about 96 to 100 uh, individuals on the fiduciary panel, not all participate, but we'll be reconstituting uh, that panel um, with the application process opening uh, this month, the end of uh, this month, May 27th, uh, and closing June 30th. Uh, everyone will have to reapply. And if you know of others who wish to, uh, join the panel, please uh, encourage them to also apply. Prior experience is not necessary. We will have training for individuals who would like to join um, our uh, fiduciary panel. Uh, and we'll reestablish that and, and identify the individuals who are, who are appointed to that panel uh, early November, uh, November of this year, November 2022. Uh, Nancy alluded to uh, the um, working group that uh, the court participated in, judges on the court, as well as uh, the Register of Wills and um, law professors and, and practitioners, some of who were present uh, with this estate administration working group, uh, basically done by uh, Council for Court Excellence and Access to Justice. And it was a way to look at uh, the rules and the probate, the probate code to make it more user-friendly 
and less complicated and complex. Some of you all have had experience in having uh, petitions or matters returned based upon certain requirements. And we wanted to uh, drill down into that to make it more user-friendly in which an individual could uh, readily uh, file a petition and uh, get letters of administration or be appointed as a guardian or conservator in a uh, more easily manner. So uh, that undertaking was done uh, uh, over a year ago and uh, uh, it's uh, on the tour now, I believe, uh, for uh, the city council, hopefully to approve some of the, those changes and statutory changes. Um, so those are the um, uh, key uh, op operational updates uh, that are occurring uh, in the probate division. Um, uh, as I move to reimagining um, uh, the plan for the court and courts across the country have been doing this based upon, you know, the, the, the results of uh, what, what we occurred from the um, uh, pandemic. Um, and um, there basically has been, you know, some pluses and minuses, some silver linings uh, that uh, we, we, we saw uh, from the pandemic. Uh, but uh, we are, we, all of the divisions across the court have submitted um, uh, reimagining plans to the chief judge for her approval. And those will be uh, uh, promulgated or issued shortly. Uh, specifically in the probate division, um, we learned that, um, and, and the pandemic of course made us look at things a bit differently there were many benefits and uh, it allowed us to become more efficient with our use of time. Uh, some of the advantages uh, we found, and this was done after a, a couple of bench bar conferences with uh, uh, certain members here, uh, uh, providing suggestions uh, to the court and how we can um, process cases before it. And some of the uh, advantages uh, uh, in, in consisted of uh, less travel time to the court if we conducted a, a lot of these proceedings remotely. Uh, the parking fees would go away. Those you know, nuisance issues would go away. And it would be more efficient for the court because we could then continue to hold hearings, which we have been doing during inclement weather. Uh, there would also be a reduction in, in the wait time for litigants. We had started to stagger cases, but we found that this is even better because we can actually slot in the time in which litigants and participants can participate and come aboard and sign in to these virtual or remote hearings. And the cases can be resolved in a timely manner without individuals having to wait uh, all day or a majority of, the, of their time for their particular case uh, to be called. Uh, one of the better advantages that we found it, uh, was on the side of uh, our intervention cases where we had petitions to uh, for the appointment of guardians and conservators. And generally the subject of that petition is the individual who uh, uh, is deemed to have been incapacitated would not be able to be in court. That subject would not be able, physically not be able to come to court. Uh, but through these virtual hearings, we, we've been able to have the subject present, uh, family members, friends present, along with um, the medical staff, the treating physicians, the nurses, the social workers. Uh, so we've had um, a, a good benefit there, a great benefit there, because we had, we've had full, participati full participation uh, through our remote proceedings. And that's one of the suggestions uh, to the chief going forward that our intervention proceedings uh, continue to remain virtual or remote. And those individuals who have challenges accessing the court remotely, we will be able to assist. Um, presently, we have um, certain centers around the court, around the city rather, uh, where individuals who don't have access to internet can go on and use uh, these internet services at uh, what we call barges. Those are the uh, balance and restorative justice centers uh, throughout the city. Uh, and we have a couple uh, at Superior Court as well. So we're gonna make it as easy as possible for those individuals who 
are unable to log on um, because they don't have access to inter internet. But uh, we find that um, some of these virtual proceedings uh, uh, are more uh, beneficial for, for these subject matters. There are others that uh, we will be uh, returning to the court for in-person uh, proceedings and uh, uh, they are understandable. Uh, for, for example, trials or uh, contested evidentiary hearings, uh, we would like uh, those proceedings to return in person. Uh, the court needs to make uh, credibility findings of, uh, of witnesses, so we would benefit having everyone back in court uh, in person. And there will be um, situations such as long distance or out of town witnesses who are unable to uh, be in person in court where that particular judge may allow uh, a hybrid system where for that witness or that individual uh, to appear remotely, um, even where uh, these trials or uh, contested evidentiary hearings uh, are, are held in person. And we, come, we came to this conclusion uh, after speaking to the public in, 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 in these bench bar conferences, uh, both on the probate and the tax division uh, side, uh, that some of these uh, proceedings should remain remotely and some should uh, uh, continue uh, or return uh, in person. Others that uh, will be in person will include, um, for those who are familiar, hearings on, on auditor master's reports, um, uh, summary hearings, uh, those hearings where uh, the court uh, determines or tries to attempt to determine why certain filings haven't been, certain filings haven't been filed or the issues with accounts or inventories. Um, but other matters such as, uh, you know, 15 minute or less status hearings or matters that are, are, are not contested, um, we're gonna do all of that um, remotely. And I, I think that will be more efficient and uh, save time uh, and better for uh, all concerned. So we, we have a lot, uh, we've done a lot and we have a lot uh, in progress now. Um, and, uh, we're, you know, as I mentioned earlier to Nancy, we're, we'll be making changes as we go along, as we see issues come up, come aboard. Uh, so this is not etched in stone, but uh, we're trying to make the experience as best as, as possible and uh, uh, maintaining um, access to justice for all who seek uh, court intervention. So uh, with that, I, I know I said a lot in a short period of time in the interest of time, but if there are any issues or questions, and I think I may have seen uh, something in the chat room, but uh, if there are any questions, we can open it up um, uh, to any questions. Judge Christian, there is one in the chat from uh, June Fan who was asking what amendments, if any, are being considered regarding the recent announcement from the Postal Service of the change to first class mail delivery timeframes and the resulting impact of the statutory deadlines for notice requirements. Is that something? Uh, that yeah, that, that's something that the, the state administration working group uh, uh, dealt with, um, not only before the changes by USPS, but in general, providing notice by way of US mail. And we're looking at going to, uh, where possible, uh, email process, email service, as well as publishing in, in, uh, in a superior court. Uh, it's being done in family court when, when um, service is being set uh, for individuals in, in custody and divorce matters. And we wanna do the same in probate. And it's actually, as you can imagine, uh, very uh, more efficient. A lot of people have cell phones, a lot of people have uh, email addresses. And we know that uh, we can uh, provide notice in a timely fashion for issues and, and proceedings by way of um, by way of email, so that's something that is actually being considered as well by the state administration working group, knowing that there are problems uh, that exist in, in in our with the U.S. Postal Service. I see that there are two other questions. Kenny, why don't you go ahead first? Great, thank you, Judge Christian. Uh, thanks for speaking with us, and I commend you and the working group on the work that you're doing to update the code and to update uh, the forms. 
Uh, I'm a former probate attorney myself, and I also spent five years in the Office of the City Administrator uh, General Counsel's Office. And in that time, I helped the lab at DC update uh, 50, over 50 of the district's most used forms um, through social science, engagement with the community, and, uh, and working with uh, those who use the forms within the DC government to make sure that they are the most understandable, uh, e easy to understand for both the public and the easiest to use for the district government. Uh, in my own time, I, I redesigned the, all of the probate forms for the district government. And I would love to share those with you and the working group um, in an effort to uh, help jumpstart that, uh, that task uh, and maybe take away uh, some of the responsibility from a very large task that it is. Uh, so if you're open to it, I would love to share this with you, which are about 80% done and need some input from the working group to make sure that they are consistent throughout and uh, correctly applied code, especially now that it may be rewritten. Well, that, thank you so much. That's wonderful news. And um, if you contact me, I will um, connect you with uh, Nicole Stevens, our register of wills, as well. And she's a member of the state administration working group as well as Council for Court Ex Excellence and Access to Justice. But that, that will be a tremendous help. And I, I know they will welcome your, uh, your expertise and what you've done already. So that's very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah. And I would love, I would love if uh, you as well took, took a look um, uh, with your expertise um, and you know, to see if, it is, if these redesign forms are you know, something that the working group can use uh, and will actually look at. Absolutely, yes. I, I'm part of the group as well, um, so I, I'm not sure if we're doing it all in one as we did the as we did the changes or recommended changes, or uh, there's uh, there's a subgroup that's working on it. But we'll get back to you um, uh, in, in in quick order. Great. And can I, can I get your uh, your email address from Nancy? Yes, absolutely. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. And then I think we have time for just one more question um, from Taisha White. Are there any efforts to make more probate division cases available on Westlaw and other platforms? Well, oh, um, there, there's um, access to uh, certain cases. Um, and if you're talking about a library of rulings, that's a different issue. But I'm not sure if you're looking at um, sp uh, specific cases to research, but uh, we, the Register of Wells has a library of uh, recent um, trial court rulings as well as court of appeal rulings. And, and while I'm more than that, um, we're also uh, looking at uh, fee petitions and, and that's been a, a project that has been going on for a while and it's coming to a, a conclusion with recommendations as well. We're trying to, um, as similar to the Criminal Justice Act, CJA attorneys are, are paid certain, certain amounts. We want to, or, or we have looked at, a, a working group has looked at uh, uh, fees uh, that can be charged for certain services uh, in, in the probate division. And uh, we'll be coming out with that soon, along with reinstituting um, the fixed fee amount that a lot of uh, petitioners uh, like to take advantage of. I think the clarification is she's wondering if there's an ability to search for cases using keywords. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure there is. I would have to get back to you uh, on that uh, with the register of wills, but I, I think there is a way to uh, research quickly via those issues. Thank you, Your Honor. And it looks like Ellen will let you close us out with one last question or comment. Thank you. Uh, Judge Christian, before you took over this current position, uh, the George Washington Law School had a program started under Judge Leibowitz to help down at the Self-Help Center. Is the Self-Help Center in person now or still remote? And when do you expect it'll be in person if it's not already? So we can start the program up again. It, it got going for about five or six months and then we got interrupted by the pandemic. Right. Um, I, I know that uh, Judge uh, Irving uh, was presiding uh, before I, I came back to the division and um, he attempted to urge 
you and GW to, to remain. And we're glad that you're willing to come back. Um, so the self-help center is, is almost back up and basically back up and running. We just need to uh, get it fully staffed. Uh, but um, right now, uh, because of the uh, CDC issues, uh, there are a certain amount of people that are physically allowed in building A, 515 Fifth Street. Uh, but we're, as soon as that clears up, which will be soon, um, uh, we're going to restaff and, and it's basically on uh, Nicole Stevens's uh, radar and, and it's uh, right there to uh, restart the self-help center. We appreciate uh, uh, the law school's uh, staffing and assistance. Thank you. I'll be in touch with Judge Younger. Uh, Judge Irving, really. Yeah, you, you can contact me as well as uh, Nicole Stevens. Judge Christian, thank you so much. This has been a, an amazing wealth of information presented in a really quick time. Um, I hope people found it interesting and helpful and that maybe you got to meet a few other people. I've put in the chat the information about our next DC Refers Reconnect, which will be on Tuesday, June 7th at 4.30. We are uh, featuring Nancy Drain, who's the Executive Director of the DC Access to Justice Commission, talking about the Justice for All initiative and the link to register is there. Um, please you know, join me in saying thank you to Judge Christian, and I hope everybody has a great day, and um, check out DC Refers. Thanks a lot. Thank you all very much.